Hey, super learners. Um, I'm so excited for this new project that we are going to be starting. Um, we listened to a story last week. It's actually the same story, but this time I'm going to read it um, so we can talk a little bit more about some of the things and then we will be able to fill in some of our chart that we will be doing. So um, the name of our project in the title of this book um, is Animals in Winter. Um, so different animals do different things during the winter time. So we're gonna find out what those things are and which animals can do them. Um, and it is written by Henrietta, Henrietta Bancroft and Richard G. Van Gelder. So this book has two authors and one illustrator. And the illustrator, remember, draws the pictures. And that is Helen K. Davy. So this is Animals in Winter. The days grow short, the nights grow long. It is getting cold. Winter is coming. Leaves have fallen from the trees. There are no berries on the bushes. Insects are gone, so the bugs. The grass is dead and brown. So maybe you've noticed some of this stuff happening where you live. Birds and other animals are getting ready for winter. Some of the birds will fly south, that means going down. Bluebirds and Orioles go toward the south. There, they go when it is warm and sunny, excuse me, they go where it is warm and sunny and where there is food for them to eat. When spring comes, the birds will make the long journey back north. They migrate. Can you say migrate? Right, so when you migrate, you move from one place to another. They may know what those are. Dying sunflowers. Some butterflies migrate too. That is what the monarch butterflies do. They gather in a tree by the hundreds before cold weather comes. They stay in the tree all night. In the morning, they fly toward their winter homes in the south. So we'll, we'll be learning about butterflies a little bit more um, later this year. Oh, we learned about this animal. Many bats fly south too, but some bats stay in the north all winter. When the weather gets cold, they go to a cave. There's no wind or snow in the cave. The bats sleep there all winter. They do not eat. They live on fat stored inside them. They do not move. They hardly breathe. They sleep, sleep, sleep. They hibernate, say hibernate. Mm -hmm. So that's where they sleep all winter long. And we're gonna find out what other animals hibernate. Um, so just to go back, it says they live on fat stored inside them. So um, we know that they eat a lot of fruits um, and some insects and things. Um, so there's not a whole lot of fat in those foods, but it's fat that they just have. Um, and I know you keep laughing at the word fat. I know it's funny, but it helps keep them warm. So the more fat they have on their body, the warmer they will be during winter. So it's a good thing to be fat in winter. <laughs> I know I'm so silly. <laughs> Woodchucks hibernate too. When fall comes, a woodchuck eats and eats and eats. He eats grass, twigs, and leaves. He grows fat. Oh, excuse me, all this talk about hibernating. Mm. 
When it gets cold, the woodchuck crawls into his long tunnel and goes to sleep. So I'm gonna zoom in so we can see. Um, so there's a secret entrance right here. And then we have the main entrance where he can go in. And the stuff that he digs out is called a mound, um, also referred to as a sun porch and watchtower. So he digs, digs, digs. And the, it says the tunnel drops and narrows to keep enemies out, to keep out enemies. So any predators, remember we've talked about predators and prey. Um, so it gets narrow, so it's wide right now. And it's gonna get narrow, a little bit thinner and smaller so that bigger animals can't get down there and get him. But that also means it's gonna be tough for him to get him. Um, so they have a sleeping chamber, kind of like a bedroom. It's lined with like um, grass and twigs and stuff. And then guess what? He doesn't potty where he sleeps. He's got a whole separate bathroom. <laughs> it's called the toilet chamber. Does he sleep for a day? Longer than that. Does he sleep for a week? Longer than that. A month? Even longer. A woodchuck can sleep as long as four months. So here he is in December, January, where we are right now, February, and March. So he can sleep all of winter. And you'll notice in March where there's hardly any snow and there's even a rainbow starting to show up. The woodchuck seems hardly alive. He breathes very slowly. His heart beats slowly. I remember you guys were talking about this in music. So it's um, instead of like our normal, when he's sleeping, it's more like a, it's a lot slower. He sleeps, sleeps, sleeps. He hibernates, there's that word again, hibernates. Some animals do not have to hibernate. They gather food and save it for the winter. That is what a pika does. A pika looks like a rabbit, looks a little like a rabbit, but with round ears. Pikas live in high mountains where winters are long and cold. They eat grass. In summer, they cut more grass than they can eat. They spread the grass on flat stones. The hot sun dries it out. It's kind of like baking. So even animals know about stuff like cooking <laughs> in their own way. By the end of summer, a pika may have gathered 50 pounds of grass. Um, I think I could be wrong, but I think that's as much grass as some of you weigh. So think about how big you are, how heavy you are. That's how much grass this little pika has collected. Whoa. She hides it under rocks. In winter, she eats the dry grass. It keeps her alive. Squirrels gather food too and save it for winter. They dig holes in the ground. They bury hickory nuts and acorns. When winter comes, they dig them up and eat them. Sometimes squirrels forget where they buried the nuts. Trees may grow from the nuts that squirrels forgot. It's a fun fact. Some animals do not get ready for winter at all. They do not store food. They do not hibernate. They do not migrate. 
They must hunt for food all winter long. There are mice that must hunt all winter for seeds of goldenrod, asters, and other wild plants. Sometimes they eat farmers' corn, oats, and wheat. So it looks like what they're doing right now, the, the farmer, it looks like, has stored up some of those corn, oat, and wheat, and the mice have dug into it, which is not good for the farmer because they worked hard to grow all that food. Deer must dig in the snow for dried leaves, plants, and moss. Moss is like the fuzzy stuff that grows on, on trees and rocks sometimes. When the snow is deep, they must eat the twigs, buds, and bark of trees. Not like a dog barks. Not that. But on the side of the tree, all the outside part is called the bark. So look how deep the snow is. Um, so for this, for this deer, you can kind of see it's what I would refer to as like its knee or its elbow. But on this one, you can't really see it on the front. You can see the back one, but not on the front ones. That's how deep it is. Pretty much. The rabbit must hunt under the snow for bits of grass and plants. When the snow is deep, he too eats the buds and bark of bushes so he can stay alive. What do you notice in the background? Little scarecrow. In the winter, the fox hunts for mice and rabbits, which as we just found out, don't hibernate. So um, they're, they're out and moving around. And guess what? Fox has to eat too. So is he the predator or is he the prey in this, in this part? He's the predator. He's the one searching for the food, hunting. The fox has discovered a mouse in its tunnel beneath the snow. So beneath means below or under. That's pretty cool. It looks like he's pouncing on top of it. So in this case, the mouse would be the prey, the one that gets hunted and eaten. When the winter is cold and the snow is deep, many animals cannot find food. Here are some ways you can help animals in winter. Make a peanut and popcorn, popcorn garland. So you can um, string peanuts and popcorn together and hang it out. Um, you can nail a sunflower head to a fence post, to a post or fence. Um, stick fruit and cheese pieces on a dead branch. Hot hang suet in a plastic net bag. Nail a seed tray with drainage holes to a fence post. Make an apple, cranberry, raisin, and orange garland. So again, that string of fruits. Make sure feeders, like our, our bird feeders, are placed out of reach of predators. Put a birdhouse in a tree or under the eaves of your house. Hang an ear of corn for squirrels and chipmunks. Plant shrubs with berries for food and shelter. So they're kind of like bushes. Please remember, it's, it's big and bold. It's a little bit darker and it's fancy looking. So that means it's so important. Please remember, once you begin feeding birds and other wild animals in winters, you have to keep going. You must continue. They are depending on the food that you supply. So once you start helping, you can't stop helping. Because if you do, then they could die. And we don't want that. Eventually, the days grow longer the nights grow shorter, it begins to get warmer, spring is coming. 
And Miss A looks forward to that time because she does not like snow at all. So um, that was animals in winter. Um, I hope you learned some new things. We'll be talking more about um, some of the words that we heard like migrate and hibernate um, or one word that we didn't mention that we'll be talking about is called adapt. Um, and that's where you change something to make sure that you're living through winter, which some of the animals did in our story, um, but they just we just didn't use the word adapt. So that was animals in winter. I hope you enjoyed. Um, stay warm and I'll see you later. Toodaloo.